Well, I have several interests, but um, I think sort of spanning the, the work that I do is that I'm interested in looking at interfaces and surfaces. And a, a nice example, I think, is the water surface. So we know that water is H2O, it's an oxygen atom with two hydrogen atoms attached to it. And if you have a glass of water, there is water, of course, in the water, in the bulk, H2O molecules in the, in the bulk water. And there are also water molecules that are floating around in the air above, but they're, they can move much more freely than in, in the water. And the question that I have is, how do these water molecules that when they look down, they see water, and when they look up, they see air. How do those water molecules precisely at the interface, how do those water molecules behave? I studied physical chemistry at the University of Amsterdam and then did my PhD at the FOM Institute for Atomic and Molecular Physics. And that is where I first started using uh, lasers and laser spectroscopy. And in fact, that's a theme that's still uh, that I still very much use in my research, is I use the vibrations of molecules to um, yeah, try to find out how the molecules are behaving. So what, what you see here is one of the setups, the experimental setups that we use to study water at interfaces. Um, and on this part of the table we generate very intense short light pulses that's enclosed in all these boxes for safety so that you don't get any radiation coming out. And then in this little box we convert those pulses that come from the big box into a new frequency, so a new color but it's in the infrared. And with this light, with this infrared light, we can excite these vibrations of the water molecule. This contains the water surface that we study with a small slit to allow access to the different laser beams that then come in and are reflect, reflected off of the surface. Part of my drive is that I, I really like to understand how molecules act and react in different environments. And water is a, is a very good example. It's a super simple molecule, it's three atoms, it's everywhere, and yet there are still many questions that we haven't solved about water, very fundamental questions. And this, yeah, is, I think is amazing and, and interesting and it's, um, it's really fun. This is the interface, and this OH group is sticking into the water, and this one is sticking out of the water. Then we can excite specifically this OH group, and then we watch it as it rotates. And this is how we investigate the water, the, the structure and the dynamics of the water at the interface. And so the way we do this is that we, we excite it with a very short pulse, and then with the second pulse, we look in very short time steps how this water molecule reorients. So this is why you need these super short femtosecond laser pulses. And with these pulses, we can make sort of stroboscopic snapshots as we see the water molecules change their orientation and rotate. I, li I really like the way that chemists think about uh, matter much more than physicists. So physicists are super good at solving mathematical equations. And, they're much, much better at it than I am. But the strength, I think, of a chemist is that they have a certain image, they have a certain sort of internal video, molecular video of what they think is going on, and then they test this video, this hypothesis. Um, and that, I think, is the strength of, well, of chemists in general and physical chemists in particular. So in, in the other lab, we use the vibrations of the water molecules to see how they behave at the interface. And here we have a different um, type of spectroscopy where we use the vibrations of molecules 
as a contrast agent in, my, in a microscope. We irradiate not with normal white light, but with light out of these uh, two different lasers. And the, the two laser frequencies are, can be varied. And the difference of those two lasers can match, say, the, again, the vibrations of the water molecule. But now we don't have to work with infrared, so we, we can excite the vibration with these visible pulses, which means that we can focus it down very tightly. So we can look at a cell, and then we can tell you by looking at the vibrations of the DNA, of the proteins, of the lipids, we can tell you where the cell membrane is, where the cell nucleus is, where the, um, the different cell organelles are, because they all have different vibrations. Inspiration comes in many shapes and forms, I think. But uh, so it can, I think it can be very practical. But of course, it's also it comes inspiration become, comes in a much more abstract way, and it's also a lot of fun to train students. That's all I think very rewarding. So I always, when people tell me, you know, what is it good for what you do when I'm at a party and I explain to them I'm a scientist and I, I tell them well. The research I do is very fundamental, so I, I'm not sure if that's going to be of any use to anyone ever. Might be. Um, it keeps me off the street, which I can assure society is a, is a great benefit. But I think my real merit, the real merit is that I train people who then go on to work in industry and are useful there. Well, I love doing science. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say.